Okay, we've completed the action phase for turn two. The Confederates decided to remove elements of three of their infantry corps uh, to steal a march on the Union. Uh, these have expended uh, two fatigue points. Um, Hood, who is deployed way, way to the west, is moving back to join the rest of First Corps. Um, now the Union, based on the, the rules, they get to activate um, one division or one uh, corps for every corps that the Confederates move. So you get three corps for that. And they also get a fact that there's no uh, Confederate units within five hexes of Fredericksburg anymore. So that releases another three corps or divisions. So they can move effectively six, up to six corps or divisions. So what they did, they concentrated the second cavalry uh, and put them back into a, a supplied uh, county off that depot. They also did the same, similar thing with the third cavalry moving it into supply from that depot, but also sort of screening Washington to the north. Um, the other movements were infantry corps, so the four infantry corps are moving northwards, sort of shadowing the uh, Confederates. Um, but we've still got a group of core, um, effectively two core there, three, no, three, three Union core there who are still stranded and some artillery and the artillery reserve. Just done a little correction, I realised that I've moved some of the uh, Union artillery reserves with these divisions, so I've placed them back where they're supposed to be. Well that's it for uh, movement because no one else is, the Confederate cavalry aren't able to move till turn three. Uh, none of these Union units can really move until the Confederates move north. Uh, pretty much all held in place until you cross the Potomac. I'm not sure about the ones in the Shenandoah Valley here when they release, that's, that's Harper's Ferry, Ferry Garrison units. Uh, I'd have to check that in the rules, but they certainly don't move at this point in time.